project, I will be giving a brief explanation of the refrigeration cycle and one way to calculate the efficiency of the system. A basic refrigeration system is made up of four main parts. The compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. The lines on this diagram represent pipes that contain a refrigerant. Now let's start at the compressor. The compressor's job is to raise the pressure of the refrigerant. The arrows in each corner of the screen show high and low pressure. After the compressor, the refrigerant is in a gas state with a high temperature and a high pressure. I will use red lines to represent the high temperature of the refrigerant. Now we get to the condenser. In the condenser, the refrigerant loses heat to the surrounding areas. Again, I will use red lines to show that heat is being lost. After the refrigerant has lost its heat, it is now in a liquid state at a low temperature. I will use blue to represent the low temperature. At this point, the refrigerant is still at a high pressure. This is where the expansion valve comes in. The job of the expansion valve is to decrease the pressure of the refrigerant. Now that the refrigerant is in a liquid state with a low temperature and a low pressure, it is now ready to pass through the evaporator. In the evaporator, the refrigerant gains heat from the surrounding area. This results in the area being cooled. The evaporator is responsible for the cold temperatures inside of a refrigerator. I will use blue lines to show that the area is now colder. Now that the refrigerant has gained heat, it returns to a high temperature gas. However, it is still at a low pressure, so it returns to the compressor and the cycle repeats. It is important to note that the compressor is the only part of the system that requires an electrical input. It is not using electricity to create heat or remove it, it is simply moving heat around. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the refrigeration system works, let's calculate efficiency. There are several ways this could be done, but right now I'll only show one way. For refrigeration systems, it is common to hear the term EER, which stands for Energy Efficiency Ratio. To find the EER, there are two things that we need to know. First, we need, the first thing that we need to know is the energy absorbed into the evaporator. Since we are speaking of thermal energy, this should be in BTUs. The second thing that we need to know is the energy into the compressor. Because this is electrical energy, our unit should be watt hours. Now all we have to do is divide the energy absorbed into the evaporator by the energy into the compressor, and we get our EER. Let's do an example. If we know that the evaporator absorbs 9600 BTUs of heat, and the compressor uses 1900 watt hours of electricity, then we get an EER of 5.05 .05, and that's BTUs per watt hour. If it's easier for you to think in terms of power rather than energy, there is another way to calculate EER. We need the power absorbed into the evaporator in BTUs per hour and the power into the compressor in watts. So if you decide to use the units BTUs per hour and watts, you will still get EER. Well, there you have it, a simple explanation of the refrigeration cycle and how to figure out the efficiency of the system.